Welcome back to Africa Prime, where we continue our chat with Gauteng MEC for Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation, Lebo Hang Maele. Just before the break, Lebo Hang, we were talking about business. Now, we know that South Africa is hosting the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations. Gauteng, of course, did play its part in making the 2010 Soccer World Cup a, a massive success. How ready are you for the, the AFCON uh, you know, uh, uh, um, Cup uh, next year? We are more than ready. Um, I think uh, we pride ourselves of uh, being one of the um, a few count. I mean, a few provinces in the in the country and in the in the continent, which has got a good infrastructure uh, when it comes to transport, um, accommodation, and and sporting facilities. Uh, so we we we're more than ready. Um, we don't have to. Uh, construct any stadium for this uh, showpiece because we have done that during the 2010 World Cup. Everybody has seen for themselves uh, how Gauteng fed in terms of uh, hosting and giving more than anything else the visitors an experience that is unforgettable. Hence some of them have been coming back uh, whether for shopping or just to uh, visit and uh, appreciate some of the infrastructure that we have. So we are more than ready uh, to host the African Cup of Nations next year. Mm -hmm. How are we going to make sure, though, that South Africans come to the games? We often have this difficulty that we need bums on seats, we need to fill those stadiums, uh, we need to pay the bills in real terms. So how, you know, what are you going to do to encourage participation in the games? You know, South Africans don't like to be taken for granted. So if you... Um, present your case and convince them that uh, it's worth uh, going to those games, they will come. And uh, you need to also look at the quality of football that is going to be displayed there, the atmosphere in the stadium, uh, uh, the, the traffic management, uh, because I, I'm one of those people who doesn't want to be inconvenienced, uh, whether I'm going to the stadium or um, um, wherever I'm going, I shouldn't be inconvenienced. So those are some of the things that we'll be looking at. But more than anything else, it should be about giving um, the, the young ones the experience, those who are still at school, mobilizing them, uh, putting them in a bus as a group, uh, getting them to the stadium so that they also develop this culture of going to the stadium at the, at the, at the young age. So mm -hmm. whilst we would want to work on the the adults encourage them to go and would have to have different strategies, package these games properly, in, uh, convince them, but we should also look at the young ones, uh, starting to build that culture, giving them the experience and the exposure as well to go to the stadiums. I'm confident that the two games that are going to be played in Gauteng, the opening and the closing, will be filled to capacity because we will be pulling all stops as the provincial government to ensure that we work with the, 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 the local organizing committee, with SAFA, with different communities as well, uh, to mobilize people to go to the stadium and also the uh, law, law enforcement and enforcement uh, agencies to ensure that there is proper coordination in terms of safety. And people are safe. Uh, people are safe, traffic management, everything mm -hmm. must be in order. Let's shift here a little bit, Lebo Hang. Um, when I introduced you earlier on, I said you're the youngest MEC in the country. You've been in the government since 2009. You hail from the Youth League. You're the chair of the Gauteng ANC Youth League uh, uh, Provincial Executive. Why is it important, uh, in your view, for young people to be in government? Well, I was in government from 2010, uh, when there was a reshuffle in November. Um, it is important uh, for young people not only to be in government but for young people to be actively involved in the in, in shaping uh, the future of our country because uh, as uh, young people we are going to inherit uh, this uh, country uh, the future is about us and uh, if if we say young people are future leaders or young people are the future uh, we're not talking about uh, something in a distant horizon. We're talking about what must happen now. And, and, and that is why it becomes important that young people must be involved in political organizations, in the church, in cultural organizations, um, in all forms of organizations that you find in society, including in NGOs. And that's why it's encouraging. When you look at, um, for instance, lobby groups, uh, and, and various formations in society, you see young people. So it is encouraging that uh, inspired by the generation of 1976 and even those that came 
before us, it becomes important that young people must participate in shaping um, the future of our country so that you are not told that you are young, you know nothing, uh, uh, old people must decide for you how this country must be governed today because if it's being uh, misgoverned, um, it's us who's going to suffer the consequences in the next coming uh, few years. So mm -hmm. it's important that we are there as things are, are done. Obviously, the importance of youth cannot be overstated. We know Africa indeed and South Africa have young populations. They make the bulk of the voters, but they also bear the brunt of some of the social ills in our society. We know that youth unemployment in South Africa, for example, is double the rate of, of general unemployment. There's been a lot of talk about how to address this issue. In your view, what is the soundest way to fast track young people actively into the economy? I think you can talk about fast tracking young people into economy without talking about uh, the challenges that are facing our economy and the capacity of our economy to, 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 to grow and to create jobs. As you know, we have been having an economy that has been growing but not uh, creating jobs. But also you can talk about uh, uh, young people without looking at the um, the, the accumulation of wealth, uh, wealth patterns and how is that uh, distributed. So th there has to be a holistic uh, approach to it. Uh, the interventions of government in, 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 in terms of infrastructure recently with the launch of the President uh, Infrastructural uh, Commission, um, more than a trillion rand is going to be spent there. We must say in that trillion rand, how much is it going to be spent in making sure that uh, we empower our companies to manufacture whatever that must be done uh, locally. Um, how many of those companies are uh, black owned, uh, youth owned, women owned, owned by people with disability? The projects that we do as government, especially the huge project, we need to make sure that um, in those there is a, a clear and unapologetic uh, 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 instruction on how must young people benefit a women and, and all that. Exactly. So, and it shouldn't be just about youth. It should also be about women and, and, and people with disabilities and all that. So that we, we, we don't have a problem of um, uh, looking at youth and then we end up uh, thinking that youth must just be absorbed in the expand, extended public works programs. Even that is good. Youth shouldn't just be extend, uh, uh, absorbed in learnerships without looking at exit uh, strategies. We say one of the things uh, that must happen, government must start uh, relaxing um, uh, requirements for your entry um, uh, uh, into government. Those posts which are lower and they don't require a lot of experience. If you look at the uh, requirements, they're very stringent. And you're saying those are some of the things. So that those young people who are in learnerships, they can immediately be absorbed there. Uh, but th th there has to be a number of things that must happen. Young people must uh, have that entrepreneurship uh, 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 spirit so that you don't have a situation where young people are just dependent on tenders. Every young person who wants to go in business, they think tenders is the only way to go. We're lacking in terms of innovation as a country. And that's where young people who are entrepreneurs must look at what can we innovate as a country, which should be uh, sold in Africa, should be exported. Uh, we, we don't export much. Um, uh, and, and, and currently with the crisis of the of the, um, European uh, Union. the European Union, we have been uh, exporting most of our of, of, of our uh, commodities to Europe, and now that uh, things are not going well in that part of the world, what what must we do? But we should also uh, look at the stability of Africa because our economy can grow and thrive uh, in isolation to Africa. Um, it, 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 it then becomes important that we stabilize those parts of Africa where there is wars. We must make sure that there is peace and uh, economic activity takes place, uh, the economy grows and, and, and we're also able to uh, uh, trade amongst ourselves as Africans, even before we talk about trading with Europe and Asia, which there's nothing wrong, but uh, let's firstly make sure that uh, we strengthen that in Africa. So for me, the, 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 the issue, issue of youth um, uh, unemployment, it, it shouldn't be about the job. What is this? The wage, wage subsidy. subsidy 
or in, 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 or uh, whatever. It shouldn't. For me, that's mechanical. That's that's pop, populist. You're talking about a complete mind shift. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for me, it's populist um, uh, to the extreme for the opposition party to want to create an impression that if you give money to companies, they will create jobs. In fact, we are not even sure that they would, and even the quality of, jo of those jobs. I think uh, for us who are in the ruling party, we're looking at the quality mm -hmm. of jobs. They must be decent. We're looking at the conditions of, uh, of savings there so that we shouldn't um, just give young people work uh, which is not going to help them to become serious players in the mainstream economic activity. Mm -hmm. Because for a very long time, uh, Africans and blacks in general have been in the periphery of the economy. They continue to be in the periphery of the economy. And that is why the ruling party is now talking about a radical shift towards uh, ensuring that our people are, main, uh, are integrated into the economy. And I'm saying, I think that's long overdue. And we're actually taking time. We can't continue be talking about being radical. We must be radical now. We must mm -hmm. say, what is it that we must do now? Not everything must wait for um, a legislation. Everything must but be done. But if we're talking it. about being radical, um, are we? Are you suggesting radical along the lines of the youth league under the expelled leader Julius Malema? Radical as in nationalising of mines? What exactly are you calling for in terms of economic policy? For me, when when I when I say radical, it means immediately in our procurement spend uh, as government. We must be able to say wh whatever we spend, because we're spending billions of money uh, on infrastructure and all that. We must impose um, a, a clause that says uh, for you to get a tender, you must uh, firstly buy local. Because there are many people who get uh, tenders to do well, uh, prefabricated uh, uh, structures or whatever, and they, they, they go uh, to China to, 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 to import those things here. When we've got the uh, manufacturing plants that are not working here, we are very nice about it. We only the only thing we want to see it's uh, well you've got uh, one or two few black faces they've got 25 percent and shouldn't be about that. In the immediate, it, sh it should say what is it that can be done and uh, using the public spend which can be reinvested back into the economy and it can be able to create jobs. Well. The 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 ANC has said that uh, in its recent uh, policy conference that we need to look at the uh, state intervention into the key sectors of the economy. That might take some time to say which are the key sectors and what exactly do we want to do there. But I'm saying the state-owned uh, enterprises. What is that? Can we do? And we must be able to, something that will shake the industry and you don't have to wait for the law, but at the same time, it's not illegal. Uh, we're now going to be building uh, uh, trains to the value of, um, I don't know, 100 billion or so. We're going to be spending more than 800 billion in ESCOM. Where is all that money going? And uh, why can't we create capacity if those companies that are placed wherever they are, why can't they come and put their plants here okay. so that that can create jobs We've for We've got people? to leave it there. Thank you so much, Lebohang. Much to talk about. That's where we have to leave it. Thank you for joining us and goodbye.